I'm up in the bee yard to do a quick inspection this evening. It's really hot and humid, but I have a few things to do. It seems that I never have a lighter that works, but this one works a little bit. I've got to light my smoker, and it's really windy today. I like to use dry pine needles. I collect them when it hasn't rained and keep them in a bucket. If you didn't clean out your smoker the last time you used it, as I am, then you'll have to clean it out now. It's a good thing to do before you get to the bee yard, if you can remember. Then take a loose handful of dry pine needles, and it's really windy. So I kind of have to stick them down in there a little bit to get them started. Sometimes I'll use little pieces of egg carton, the cardboard kind, to get the smoke started. But sometimes I don't have to if the pine needles are really dry. As the pine needles begin to burn, gently puff the bellows. This brings air into the bottom of the smoker and helps to fan the flames. I can take my hive tool and push the pine needles down to the bottom. I like to puff until I get some flames coming out of the top. Then I can get a handful of pine needles that are a little more tightly compressed and push them down into the smoker quickly using my hive tool and pumping the bellows to keep it going. This is an old smoker that needs cleaning. I couldn't find my good one today. And I have almost as much smoke coming out of the lid as I do the spout. But that's okay. It still works. It takes the smoke a few minutes to do some good, so I like to get a few puffs around the entrance and at the bottom before I go into the hive. Even with the inner cover, the bees will stick the top down a little bit, so if you can give it one sharp hit with your hive tool, it helps to get it off. And you will notice that I use a special homemade ventilated inner cover. It works just the same as your plain one. It just gives me room in the top to put a feeder. I'm just checking this colony to see if it needs another honey super. It had problems in the spring and did not have a queen for a time, so it's not my strongest colony. And as I look inside, I can see that they have not filled this honey super of drone comb. So I will not be adding another super today. Time to button the hive back up. As you go to the next hive, be sure to give your smoker a few puffs. It helps keep the fire going and add a little smoke at several points around the hive. Again, you can take your hive tool and pop the top. You need somewhere to lay the components that you're taking off the hive. This hive stand has room right beside the hive. Otherwise, you need some type of bench or a table or the back of the truck somewhere to put it. I put a little smoke down through the inner cover hole because I saw bees down in there. And this colony looks much different. It's not as obvious on camera, but as I look down between the frames, I can see that there are some bees working on each one of the frames. It's not full yet, but it has activity. As you inspect your hive and remove the components, hive beetles are going to crawl out. There will be a few. Squish all of them that you can with your hive tool. Now we know that bees usually fill out the outer frames last. So by removing a frame on the end, I can tell how far along the colony is. To aid in making sure that the bees complete all the, the frames and fill them, I take some out of the middle 
and put in the number one position and the number nine position. In this way, I make sure that the bees are finishing every frame in the box before going up to the next box. I run nine frame spacers in my Honey Supers only. I have an extractor that I use and this makes uncapping the frames much easier. I have very hilly land and without my ATV I don't know how I would get my beekeeping stuff where it needs to go. Here I am setting a new box that has frame and drawn comb. This is not a foundation, this is drawn comb. And I re can replace my inner cover and my top. This hive now has grown fairly strong, so I'm going to completely remove my entrance reducer. I really need to find my good smoker because this is a pain. Smoke your colony just a little bit before you take the top off. It makes life much easier. As you take the components of the hive apart, always be observant and kind of keep an eye out for your queen. Where she should be and where she is is not always the same thing. Wow. Now, this colony is farther along than the other two. This honey super is full of bees. It's time to take a picture. As I looked down between the frames, I could see that there was white comb there. So I feel good about adding a second super of drawn out comb to this colony. That's one of the advantages of having some years in beekeeping is that you do have those boxes of drawn comb to give the bees. We replace our inner cover and I'm ready to close up the hive. I use these straps to keep my hives together because I do live in an area that has bear and the straps certainly will not completely protect the hive. But if an inquisitive bear got through my electric fence and just toppled the hive, it might s prevent some damage. This is the last production colony. It's not uncommon for colonies on the end to be extra strong because some bees drift to them. And I should have brought my table to this end of the bee yard so that I could put my equipment on it. But I didn't. Use my hive tool to pry my inner cover free. And what am I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to have to set it on the ground. But that's okay. It'll just be for a minute. Now as I look down between these frames, I'm seeing a lot of bees and a lot of beeswax. I believe they have completely filled this box. Wow. Now that's beautiful. That's what it's all about. This is a frame of capped honey. The bees have ripened the nectar and completed the conversion process. 
and put a white cap of beeswax on it. Now, I could harvest that right now, but I don't want to have to clean up the extractor for one box of honey or two. So I'm giving them an empty super of drawn comb. This will give them some space, hopefully keep them from swarming. No guarantee of that. And in another week, I'll look again. If we were not having all this rainy weather, I would feel pretty confident that things would progress. But you can't ever tell with the weather that we've been having. Bees don't collect a lot of nectar in the rain. Make sure your edges are even as they can be. And close it up so that your bees can get back to work. Now, I'm going to add a few more pine needles to my smoker because I've looked at several hives here. And I'm going to actually look at some frames now, so I don't want to run the risk of not having any smoke. And you want your smoke to be that cool white smoke, not dark, hot smoke. This little colony was an emergency. This was the swarm that I caught a few days ago. I didn't really want another beehive right now. I wasn't as prepared as I could have been. So I just kind of used what I could grab to put them in here. This is not meant to be a permanent setup because I only have nine frames in the box and that is including the frame feeder that you see on the left. All I'm trying to do right now is to preserve the genetic material from the queens. Now, that's an old piece of honeycomb that ha at one time had had some wax damage, wax moth damage, but I was just grabbing what I could to put in there. I use my hive to, to separate the frames because they stick them together and then I can lift it out. This is really dark comb that I just grabbed because I was in a hurry. I won't leave this in the colony long term. We're having a lot of rainy weather now and I think the colony will be a little slow. I will be feeding them and in another week or so I will decide whether to keep this colony or not and if I do keep it then I will really up my feeding program and give them a proper setup. The swarm seemed to have a couple of virgin queens in, with it and I'm not seeing them on the frames but that's okay. I'm not going to stress over that. I'm mainly just looking in here to see that the bees are in here and that they're storing some nectar in their comb and when I'm finished I want to make sure that I have 10 frames in the box because I do have one frame of foundation and I don't want them to make burr comb between my frames. Spacing is important. I am not surprised to not see the queen or larva. This has only been in here a few days. When you remove frames from the colony, always try to lift the frames as straight up as possible. You never know where the queen will be. And see how I flip them? This allows me to look on each side without having to let go of the frame. Now this is a frame of foundation that I put in there uh, a few days ago and they are starting to draw some comb in the top. Be really careful with foundation. It's not strong at all until the comb is drawn out and if you flip it too aggressively it can just fall right out of the frame or at least the bottom will fall out and that's really aggravating. So be real gentle with uh, frames of foundation that have 
bees on them. It makes them heavy. Now I blew on the bees and that makes them move. And that allowed me to take a good photo of the drawn comb. Now this frame was a really dark frame. And I really want to discard it. I don't even want to leave it in there for a while. And possibly that one too. But when I hold it up to the light and look at it, it wasn't completely dark. So I decided I would leave it in for a little while. And I'm adding uh, some fresh frames so that I will end up with 10 frames in my box. I'm going to remove this dark frame too. So I look carefully to make sure the queen's not on there. And then I'm just trying to shake the bees off. They don't want to come off. I'm leaving this frame up here so that some of the bees that are on there can, can uh, hopefully smell their sisters and move off the frame so I don't have to shake it anymore. Now I'm using the liquid from my spray bottle, which is sugar water with a little honey bee healthy and putting it in that frame feeder to give these bees a little extra pick-me-up. Tomorrow or the next day, I will come up here with uh, a good sugar water feeder and get a little more aggressive with providing for the bees. I'm unsure of the status of the swarm. I will keep the entrance reduced really small because it's a small swarm of bees and they have feed inside. And I'll figure out what to do with them later. Thank you for coming with me to the bee yard.